Okay, so welcome to UNT Preview. Welcome to the business session. Um, today we have Shelby and Christina presenting for us from the College of Business. And then we also have Nicholas that's gonna be um, facilitating our Q&A after the presentations are over. Um, so the Q&A, just keep it friendly. Um, if you're thinking of a question, just go ahead and keep it in your head until the Q&A um, after the presentations. Um, and yeah, yeah, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to Shelby and Christina. Sounds good. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead. Can you make me host again so I can share my screen? Yes. Okay, so Christina is going to get us uh, kicked off here um, on our presentation in about the Ryan College of Business. Hi guys, uh, my name is Christina Aguilar and I'm the Director of Student Engagement and Recruitment for the Ryan College of Business and we're so excited to have you here and kind of I kind of like the fact that uh, we're a small group today so hopefully we will be able to um, answer your questions. This, this session is really about you all. And so what we're gonna do is go over a few slides, give you an overview of the college and um, some of the demographics and a little bit more about our programs. And at the end, we're gonna open it up to Q&A. And so um, that's really where we wanna just kind of talk one-on-one -on -one with you all and, um, and answer some of the questions that maybe you wanna delve in a little bit deeper uh, from the presentation. So Shelby, if you will go to the next slide. Awesome. Um, so a little bit about the Ryan College of Business. Um, it is one of the largest business schools in the nation. Um, actually, this fall, we have a record enrollment. So I know on the slide here, it says more than um, 5,800 students, but we're actually right at about 7,000 students. Um, so with COVID, lots of things have changed with, um, with how we are delivering classes. And one of the things that we saw was that um, students really wanted to take advantage of the ability to do online courses that we don't normally offer. And so we saw a major spike in enrollment for our, specifically for our undergraduate students. And so we're super excited about that. Um, as you can see, we are a very diverse um, college as well. We have students representing more than 70 countries. And one of the biggest things that we love to tell our students about is that obviously you are coming to UNT to get an education, but our hope is that in four years, you will um, then become one of our alumni. We have more than 50,000 alumni, many of whom have stayed in the DFW area. And um, that really is an advantage for our students compared to a lot of other universities. I went to Texas A&M, um, so I was in a small town. And, um, and one of the advantages of being in the DFW area is that you have access to all of those companies that are right in our backyard. And again, many of those alumni are in leadership roles. As you see, we have more than 700 um, CEOs or presidents that, uh, of their companies that are Ryan College of Business bred um, alumni. And so they always come back to, to us and wanna work with us and offer jobs for sure and internships for our students. So we are really excited about the connection that we make while you're at UNT, but also the one that we keep after you graduate. And again, we are not just about, um, about getting you through school. We want to build, build leaders. And so I think our, our stats definitely show that. And you can see, um, I know that it's a little bit small, but um, just a little bit about our demographics, kind of our average GPA, average class size. Um, a, some of that has changed a little bit and our class size is actually a, a little bit smaller um, now that a lot of our classes are being offered remote um, um, this fall and also in the spring. And so that has really helped for classes to be a little bit smaller as well. Um, our undergraduate demographics, you can kind of see the breakdown of ethnicity there. Um, uh, and our master's demographics, it's there as well, because I know there, there might be some of you that might be interested in going straight from your undergraduate program into your master's program. So we like to share that as well. And then also at the very bottom, if you could see all of those kind of little um, people, um, you see that we are a majority male. Um, and I know we haven't gotten our full numbers um, in for this 
this year, usually we, it's at the end of the fall that we get our, our new numbers um, for, for our demographics. But generally speaking, we tend to lean a little bit more male than female, but, but for the most part, when you're in classes, especially if you're a female and that's you know, something that you're, that you're looking at, it, it does not feel like the, um, the demographic, the ratio is that, is that different. It really does kind of feel 50-50. So, um, and, and I know that again, since those numbers have been, um, were put together, we have, um, we're, we're leaning a little less male and a little more female as well. So just wanted to share that with you. So Shelby, if you wanna to switch to the next slide. So again, we have worked so hard in the last several years to really focus on um, building some of our programs, um, many of which are, are were already strong. And what we've done is, is put a little bit more um, uh, financial backing into some of our programs to hire more faculty, more world-renowned faculty, and uh, really drive in more students into those programs. And what you can see is kind of the fruits of our labor from doing that. And, um, and while I, I know Shelby will go over all of our programs and we think all of our programs are great, we wanted to highlight just some that, that we are especially proud of. Um, so you can see our logistics and supply chain management program is number four in the state. Our graduate accounting program, uh, which Nick is actually in our accounting program. So I know he will be able to talk a little bit more about that program. That is ranked number one in Texas. Our entrepreneurship program, which literally over the past five years has really skyrocketed. Um, it is now ranked number 14 in the nation for best value. Um, our undergraduate marketing program is ranked sixth in the nation as well. And then our on online master's finance program is ranked number 11 in the nation for best value. And what you'll see um, is a, a lot of our, our programs once you go into the master's part, a lot of those are, are online programs. And so again, that's something to think about as you're planning for your future. I know many of you are just kind of deciding what college you wanna to go to, but we always like to tell students to start thinking beyond your undergraduate years as well to, to start making a plan for your master's if that's something you're interested in. <clears throat> so moving along, um, in February of 2019, we received um, the largest gift in university history from G. Brent Ryan and his wife, Amanda. Um, and so because of this commitment that they gave to us, this $30 million commitment, um, we are able to fund um, many different academic endowments and scholarships. Um, we are able to provide funds to support um, strategic management and things like that. Um, and because of that gift, um, we have, we renamed our college from, we were College of Business and we are now the G. Brent Ryan College of Business. Um, so it's very exciting to have an alum uh, come back. He graduated, um, I believe in 1987. Um, and being able to, him thinking of us after he has become successful um, in the business world, he owns um, the, I believe it's the largest tax um, accounting firm in North America um, based in Dallas. And so he's the CEO of that. And um, the fact that he is still reminiscing on his time at UNT in the College of Business and thought to give back to us, I think is really major. And I think it speaks a lot to our college as a whole um, that our alum are, are willing to come back and, and donate and invest in future business leaders. Um, so pictures here are just some of the photos from the, um, from the, the ceremony. Um, and we are just very excited and very grateful um, for the opportunities that, that this gift has given our college. So this is our building. Um, sadly, we, we are not there right now, um, but our, beauty, our building is beautiful. Um, we are very proud of our building. So um, we opened this building up in fall of 2011. Um, and so it's really designed for business students to be able to um,
Yeah, I think Shelby is frozen. Um, let me check because she's got she's kind of got control over the presentation. So let me double check. Sorry about that, guys. Hi guys, in the meantime, while we're kind of trying to figure out um, getting Shelby back with us, um, if you do have some questions right now that have kind of popped up for you guys, go ahead and go drop them in the Q&A. Um, if there's something that we can answer just by sending you a message or being able to answer it out loud while we kind of get back set back up, um, either way we can also do it at the end. But if you've got some questions while we get set up, um, go ahead and feel free to drop them there this, as well. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um... Technology. That's the first time I've ever seen you freeze. <laughs> so of course, you know, hey, technology, gotta love it. Gotta love it. I know I was like, where did everything just go? <laughs> um, I was so confused. I was just talking away. Um, anyways, back to the business leadership building. Um, we, yeah, so we really just want our students to be prepared whenever they go into, um, into the field um, once they graduate because that's really what we're here for is to prepare you for that, that post-graduation life. Um, and so we wanted our building to, to be a tool in that as well for all of our business students. And um, just kind of going back um, about the uh, business leadership building, although it is definitely, it feels very different now because many of our classes are offered online, if you are in Denton um, and are on campus, you are welcome to go through. One of the things that we really strive to do with that building is to make it feel like a corporate environment. So I just wanted to, to let you all know that, um, that it is still open for business, no pun intended. So um, please feel free. Again, it, you won't get the full fill as, you know, as we would normally have during um, you know, our, our long semesters, but we're hoping to get back there soon. So just wanted to share that. Perfect. So you may be asking why the Ryan College of Business. Um, and so the, the, these are probably some things. And when I tell students that are looking at different colleges and trying to compare, really the ultimate question is, how is this, how can we serve you and what you're looking for? And so really thinking about what it is that it's important to you. And so one of the things that, that I will say that we pride ourselves in is the real world application of student learning. So lots of things that you will do in classes, particularly as you get into your upper level courses, um, you will be doing things and, and working collaboratively with companies and with business leaders um, to do case problems and to work on, on real live issues that um, companies are going through, things that are happening in the economy, those sorts of things. And so it's not just always about going in and reading in, you know, in your book and taking a test. It's really looking at um, what's happening and how you can how you can problem solve now. And so I think that's a great benefit to to be able to go into the workforce feeling prepared and that you really know how to how to think critically and solve problems. Also, we have lots of award winning faculty, um, many of them with in, uh, experience in the industry. And so that's always a great thing um, to have people that have actually been in the place that you're wanting to go to. They, um, they haven't just gone and, and got their PhD and gone, have gone straight into the classroom. They are really, when they're teaching you, they, they know what they're talking about. And, um, and the other great thing is they also have many connections back into the industry. And so that, um, you know, really helps with bringing in great speakers and again, having, um, having you know, real live problems to, to solve. And, and you will see that a lot of, um, you know, projects that you'll go into once you're in your upper level courses um, are, you're going to be working directly with those business leaders on, on, um, on different projects as well. Also, again, I mentioned before that we have the corporate learning environment in the BLB, and I think that's why it's so important if you do have the opportunity to go into that building, because I think once you walk in, you feel a difference. You feel 
um, you know, that it's a space where you can where you can learn, but also the building is set up um, to to really have everything at your fingertips, um, including a cafe and study rooms and tutoring rooms and we have our own in house career center as well. Um, which goes into the next point. And so really everything is there that you will need to be successful. And the idea when, when the building was created was that you could literally walk in in the morning and get everything that you need right there in the BLB um, and not have to leave if you don't want to until you're ready to go home. Um, and then I mentioned earlier about our strong alumni network. I can't stress that enough because truly that is um, a key to your success. And, and we like to connect students as early as possible with, uh, with alumni. And uh, one of the new programs that our career services has started this semester is a um, kind of like, um, if you will, a um, like a uh, a match.com <laughs> um, if, um, if we want to compare it to kind of dating, but it um, is uh, it's specifically for mentors in the industry. And so you literally go in, set up a profile and get matched with a mentor, uh, many of whom are our alumni who are wanting to give back. And so that's a really great thing that we have implemented this semester um, to just help you kind of get, get um, to know people that are in the field that you're wanting to go into. Shelby, you can switch to the next slide. So opportunities for engagement and support. And these, this is just kind of a, a brief um, kind of bird's eye view of our engagement. And this is something <clears throat> that is super important to us, um, especially again, now that so many people are taking their classes online, it's so important for us to make sure that you still feel connected to the college. And so, um, as I mentioned before, we have lots of classes that bring in business um, business leaders and speakers. We have a, um, a distinguished speaker series that kind of right now is on pause. We're looking at how we can offer that virtually and still have that same experience, but that's where we bring in um, a, a high level CEO of a, of a company uh, to come and talk to all of our business students. Um, but what we're trying to do is do, do that same kind of thing within classes. And so I will say having, having talked to professors and other courses, they are really trying to make, make that more of a focus for, for online courses to keep students engaged. And so um, trust me, students are not missing that, that aspect of, of still having, um, having kind of speaking events, just now they're being offered virtually. Also engaging with uh, business alumni, alumni through mentorship programs, like I just mentioned, and mixers. Um, again, we are looking at how we're gonna offer those virtually in the spring. Um, we usually have monthly mixers with our alumni, our business alumni specifically. Um, um, and so we're looking at how we can switch that up virtually for the spring as well. So um, th those are really important and, and great ways for students to stay connected um, to people again in the industry. Also professional development is probably one of um, the key focuses of the college. Um, so we offer workshops that can help you sharpen your skills and whatever it is that you're looking to do, especially as you start to um, plan for internships and um, looking to apply for full-time positions. So if it's you know building your resume or interviewing or anything that you still feel like you need to sharpen your skills on, we offer those workshops and they are offered virtually now. Generally um, in kind of a normal semester, we offer about 50 workshops um, per semester. So when you look at that, that double that to um, 100 per year, um, there are so many offerings. And the great thing now is that since they're being offered virtually, a lot of them are being recorded and just offered um, to you at any time. So if at two in the morning, you're really wanting to learn a little bit more about networking, you can go in and, um, and just pull up those videos on YouTube. And so those are just great ways to just make you feel like you're prepared as you're starting to plan for your career. Also in fall 2017, we implemented one hour professional development courses that are required for all business students. So it's actually part of your degree program. Um, and we, one of the reasons we began those classes was because we were getting feedback from employers that they felt like UNT students, specifically business students, were great in terms of knowing the, um, you know, having the skills and knowing what to do when they go into 
um, the workplace, but where we needed to really sharpen up skills was on kind of the soft skills. So knowing how to network, knowing how to um, kind of market yourself, um, knowing how to um, go into to meetings and work in teams and those sorts of things. And I will say that that's not just, um, that that was not just an issue for UNT students. That's kind of an ac across the board thing that we, um, that all college students kind of really need that extra push on. And so our Dean was really adamant that that was something that she was gonna um, to put into place. And so um, for those of you that don't know, kind of getting new classes approved and getting them into an actual degree program, that sometimes takes years to happen. And so we kind of sped up that process and I think we're able to get, get everything, um, you know, presented and voted on and into the curriculum within a couple of years. And so, um, so like I said, that started in fall 2017. And our hope is that, um, you know, as students begin to, to go into internships and full-time positions, that employers will come back to say that, you know, they, they see a difference in how students are more prepared um, from a professional development standpoint. Also, student organizations are a big focus for our college and really for UNT in general. And I tell students that are in my professional development course um, about the importance of being, belonging to at least one student organization that's in the major that they're in, um, just because there's so many connections that you can make, things that you won't always learn in the classroom that you can learn through a student organization. And what I will say, and, and uh, one of the things that I hear from employers a lot is that yes, they want students who have a great GPA. They want students who are who um, academically are successful, but they really want students who are involved. And so we have companies, and I and I know Southwest Airlines is one of them. That one of the the main areas that they look at on resumes is student involvement, and not only student involvement, but student leadership as well. So it's not just so much that you're that you belong to an organization, but that you're moving up into leadership roles. And so I tell students early on to start planning for that because by the time you're ready to start applying for jobs, you really wanna have that res your resume packed with those experiences. Um, so we have about 26 business focused student organizations that range from kind of general business to specific um, to specific uh, majors like the American Marketing Association or the National Association of Black Accountants. And so um, you can get really focused. And the great thing about it is that our, our organizations are open to everyone. So for example, we have a women in business organization that we have male students who are a part of that. So, um, and, and it's just a way for them to kind of diversify their experience. And so we encourage that as well. And then finally, scholarships. Um, that's one of the questions we get asked a lot is about scholarship opportunities. About 75% of students at UNT um, receive some sort of financial aid and or scholarships. And so we know that many, most students don't come into their college experience being able to pay out of pocket for everything. And so we have lots of financial aid available to you. It's um, what I say is it's ripe for the picking. And so you really have to um, just go in and apply for as many opportunities as possible. Within the Ryan College of Business, we have our own set of scholarships that are just for our students. And so um, we are, we literally, I think this week alone, we got five new donors that have um, put in money for scholarships for next year. And so, um, so that's a great thing that once you become part of our college, that you're eligible for even more funding than what the university um, on its own can offer you. And even more so, once you become a declared major, departments within our college have their own scholarships as well. So, you know, we just tell students to um, be prepared at once they, once you are enrolled in the college and you have um, a UNT GPA, you are literally eligible for, for um, all of our general business scholarships. So um, I am done with this slide if you want to go to the next Shelby. So an overview of our college of our academic programs. Um, so we have five academic departments. We have the accounting department, we have the finance, insurance, real estate, and law, or FIREL, as we like to call it for short. Um, we have information technology and decision sciences, or ITDS. Um, we have a management department, and then we have marketing, logistics, and operations management, or sometimes we will say MLOM. Um, we, love, we love a good acronym here. Um, <laughs> And so we offer 16 undergraduate degree programs. We have um, 17 MBA and MS programs, which I think has changed um, because we do, we have a new MBA program 
um, the sport entertainment or the sport MBA um, located in Frisco. And then we have um, eight PhD programs as well. So just a general overview. Um, and then to get a little bit more specific, these are going to be all of our um, undergraduate programs in the Ryan College of Business. And so um, we have two different types of degrees. We have a bachelor's of business administration and then we have a bachelor's of science. Um, and so they're both bachelor's degrees. Um, the way I explain it is both degrees require you to have 120 hours, um, but it's just, there's slight differences between the hours that you have to take, the courses that you have to take um, for each of these programs. And so um, in our bachelor's of, bus of business administration, we have accounting, business analytics, business economics, um, business integrated studies. Um, and then we have two different, so we have business integrated studies, which is a degree program where you can take two different areas of business and then kind of pair them together um, to really fit the need that you have, um, or maybe you have some different goals going into your career. Um, that degree is really good for students that are maybe wanting to um, learn accounting, but then they also really want to, um, they want to go into real estate. So they can kind of take those two and, and put them together. And then we also have an international track um, for business integrated studies. Uh, and then we have sport entertainment management, um, which is offered at our Frisco campus. Um, we have entrepreneurship and enterprise management finance. We have a BBA in marketing, and then we also have a professional selling concentration, um, which is a separate program. And then we have operations and supply chain management, human resource management, real estate with a residential property management concentration. And then we have risk insurance and financial services with two different tracks. We have a financial planning track, and then we have a risk and insurance track. And then for our bachelor's of science, we have the um, BSMS accounting program, which is a five-year program where you earn both of your, both your, um, your bachelor's and your master's degrees in those five years, and that will enable you to go sit for the CPA exam. Um, so it's really designed for students that are looking to, uh, to be a CPA. And then we also have the aviation logistics program, um, business computer information systems, and then we have logistics and supply chain management. So a couple of notes on this slide. Um, we have four degrees that are offered in Frisco. Um, we have the BBA in marketing, the BS in logistics and supply chain management, and then we have the BBA in business integrated studies for entertainment. And then lastly, we have a BS in general business. Now, I will speak on this. Um, we don't recommend this for students that are looking, that are coming in out of high school um, to do a general business degree. We really want our students to choose a major or a professional field just because we think that it gives you a competitive edge once you go into the um, into, into your career. Um, I think it, we think that it makes you a little more hireable um, and it helps for you to have a specific knowledge of an area of business rather than just generally as uh, a general view of business. So I personally have a general business degree from the institution that I attended. Um, I attended Sam Houston. And while I love my program and I love my degree, um, I do really wish that I had more knowledge specifically about one area of business rather than just a little bit of each. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to highlight. Um, just some other in information. Um, so Business administration, we have a lot of students that are asking or that are saying that they want to do their degree in business administration. So our degree, the degree type you will earn is a bachelor's of business administration. Um, it's, it's the type of degree, but it's not a major. And so again, you will either graduate with a BBA, a bachelor's of business administration or a BS, a bachelor's of science. And then you will choose a major or we like to call it a professional field. Um, but each of our degrees have about 90 hours that are the same. So that's really your general portion. And the reason why we do that is just so that way you can be a well-rounded business student. Um, so that way you have a basic knowledge of accounting, a basic knowledge of marketing, even if you're a real estate uh, major. So um, we don't offer a major called management either. Um, and so earlier I mentioned that we do have a management department, um, but they offer different courses um, in different majors within 
the field of management. And so when people say management, a lot of times in like entrepreneurship or human resources. Um, and then we don't have an international business major at UNT, but we do have an international business certificate and the business integrated studies degree with an international track. And we also have another option through the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Uh, they, you can do an international studies major through them and then have a concentration in business and economics. And then one last thing I wanted to touch on, sometimes these are some of our biggest questions. Um, we do have an advertising degree, but that's gonna be offered through the Mayborn School of Journalism. And so um, I heard, so a lot of times those are very, advertising is very similar to marketing. And so um, I heard it told to me one time that advertising is telling the story and marketing is selling the story. So they work very closely together, but they're not the same. Um, but we do have a lot of students that will, um, that will major in advertising and then minor in marketing, or they will major in marketing and then minor in journalism with a strategic communications emphasis. So those are some of your options. Um, just wanted to touch on some of our FAQs um, with our majors and then, yeah, so I will move it along. Awesome. So um, I know we um, already mentioned scholarships before, um, but I wanted to just share with you a little bit. I mean, the, um, the website that you can go to, which will actually link you to the scholarships um, section. And so, um, so it'll tell you a little bit more, but our scholarships are actually, if you plan to uh, apply for our scholarships, it would be the same um, place that you would go to if you apply for UNT scholarships. So it's kind of all, everything's in one place. Um, and then kind of uh, starting from the bottom up on this, on this slide, obviously. Um, and then, so a little bit more about um, our certificates, which basically we have students that decide, you know, they, they choose their major and then decide that they really want to get kind of a specific area of focus. And so um, it's not the same as a minor, but it's kind of the same process in terms of taking additional courses um, to get a certificate. Um, but it's not, it's definitely not as many as you would take if you, if you were getting a minor. Um, so listed there, you see different certificates that we offer. I will say that those do change. Um, we might have new ones come or some that are maybe only offered uh, during a certain time. And so um, I would always suggest to students that if you're looking to do a certificate to en ensure that that certificate is being offered at the time that you are wanting to, to get it um, and that it will stay offered for the duration of the time that you are taking the courses that you need to complete that certificate. Um, and again, that would be something that you would talk to the advisors about um, and just make sure that you're, that you get everything done in advance um, or planned out in advance to ensure that you can finish up that certificate. Um, also, study abroad is another great opportunity for students that I highly suggest um, to plan sooner rather than later. So for those of you who know that you might want to have a an international experience, which by the way is a major um, uh, plus for employers, they love to see study abroad experiences on a resume. Um, I would suggest that you start really thinking about that your freshman year. Most students go on um, study abroad experiences, usually in their junior and senior year, um, because it's a little bit easier to fit into um, your kind of into your degree program. And also, generally, a lot of the classes that are that we offer on our um, College of Business study abroad experiences are usually upper level courses. Now, right now, I will say that um, our study abroad um, experiences are on hold right now. We do have some students that are doing semester abroads that were maybe already there before pre-COVID and have stayed a little bit longer. Um, and I know that there are some exceptions, but right now our faculty-led programs are, are not being offered um, through winter semester. And I know in spring, they're looking at summer options as well um, to see what, what the plan is for that. So we're kind of just going literally day by day with um, study abroad. But I will say that study abroad, there are different experiences 
in terms of um, faculty led, uh, which means that you're going with the class and your classmates and you have an instructor that's with you on the program and kind of guiding you through everything. And I suggest those that experience specifically for students who may be a little bit nervous about going to another country, maybe haven't traveled outside of the country and just kind of want to dip their toe into the international experience. And then we have the, um, the experiences where you go solo. So that could be a semester abroad, or even if you're, if you're just doing it on your own for a summer as well, you could do that um, as well. But we, I know many of the students that I've talked to that have been on a, on a study abroad experience usually start with a faculty led program and then decide later on that they wanna do, they loved it so much that they wanna go back for a semester abroad or even go back for another faculty led program. Um, I always say that students kind of get bit with the traveling bug once they go on a study abroad experience. But the great thing about it too, I know some students are, are scared because of the cost. We have many funding opportunities available through our college and through the international programs office. And so again, that's why it's really important to plan in advance so you can really decide how much you need to save and how much money is going to be offered to you to plan um, to make that experience everything that you want it to be. Shelby, you can switch to the next slide. And then career services. So we touched on that a little bit, um, but the BLB, so the Business Leadership Building, um, within that building, there is housed um, our own Ryan College of Business Career Services Center. And so we are the only college on campus that has its own designated um, career center. Everybody else on campus, every other student at UNT has to go to Chestnut Hall to the to the main career center. Um, but we really put in the funding and the effort um, to to get our own in in-house staff because we knew how important it was for our students to be prepared for um, career prep types of things. And also just because of the sheer amount of employers that are looking to recruit our students. Um, again, I mentioned to you before how many workshops we have per semester, which is you know, about 100 per year. Um, and also, we, and that's not including um, you know, any time employers come to campus or interviews that are being um, held for our students or even mock interviews just for students to practice their, their interviewing skills. So lots of opportunities um, for students to get engaged with employers. Again, not as much as happening right now um, face to face, but I, I can't tell you enough how awesome our career services staff has been to really um, move everything virtually. In fact, we just hosted a, um, a business career fair last month that um, was virtual and it was a, a really cool experience and actually offered even more, um, I think better one-on-one -on -one conversations with students and employers than we usually have in our, in our kind of regular um, career fair. And so um, some of the things, you know, sometimes you think, you're, you're missing out on the experience when things go virtual, but I can honestly say that everything that I've experienced in terms of what the career services staff has offered virtually has felt even even better than it normally um, than it, than it normally has. And so you see here a list of um, all of the services that they offer. Um, again, and I don't believe the mentoring program is on there just yet, but that's a, a, a great opportunity um, to get connected as well. But um, so many, so many things that they can help you with to, to really start preparing for your career and even deciding what you want to do for a career. And, and sometimes, you know, I know students come in and they don't know exactly what they want to major in. They're not sure what kind of job they want. They can really talk you through all of that. And even to the point of, you know, salary negotiations, once you get to the point where you are being maybe offered you have multiple job offers and how to juggle that and decide which one's best for you. They can walk you through every step of the process. All right. <clears throat> so last one thing we did want to go over, um, just an overview of our degree programs. Um, so our program, all of our degrees are on a tiered progression. And so the purpose of that um, is to help students determine whether or not business is a good fit and to help you progress towards timely graduation. Um, and so we understand that sometimes um, you might think that this might be a, a good program for you and then you get into it and it, it really just might not be a good fit and it's not something that you're interested in and that's okay. We want to help you determine that earlier um, rather than getting to towards the end of your degree program and realizing that um, that this isn't for you. 
And so if we're not for you, we are happy to help you figure that out, happy to help you find what, what is your niche, what you should be doing, um, or what you, you would enjoy doing. Um, and of course, we want you to get to graduation in a timely fashion. Um, and so tier one, we have pre-business. Um, so all of our, our, all of our students start off as pre-majors. Um, and so in pre-business, you are required to be advised each semester. Um, and so in that pre-business uh, portion, you are required to take nine pre-business classes, um, which will be, I'll list them real quick. Um, we have English, we have two Englishes. Um, we have accounting one and two, uh, data analysis with spreadsheets. We have business calculus um, and we have economics. Um, we have business computer information systems as well. Um, and then, so in order to progress, um, to tier two, which is BUND or business undergraduate, you have to complete three quantitative or math-based courses um, with a 2.66 GPA, which is um, two Bs and one C. Uh, and then you have to have at least 45 completed, um, or yeah, 45 UNT attempted hours. Um, and so in tier two, um, you again have to complete all of those pre-business courses um, and then once you have completed those pre-business courses, um, you can meet with an advisor and um, to get that upper level, junior, senior level course clearance um, and file your official degree plan. And so um, in BUND, sometimes we have students that are transfer students that maybe um, have already done all of their core and they only have two pre-business courses left. And so obviously we are not going to tell a student, um, oh, sorry, you can only take six hours if they um, meet all of the GPA requirements. So with BUND, you are able to have an upper level exception and get started on some of your upper level classes while you finish lower level classes. And then moving along to tier three, um, so that is a declared business major. Um, you are officially, um, studying your major and you are able to take upper level foundation courses and your major or professional field courses. Um, so if you would like more information about this, this is our website. Um, and so you can visit that. And then I also have my contact information on the next slide. Um, and then I do believe we're going to go ahead and open things up for questions. Um, so I'll leave this up for a second if you want to write that down or take a screenshot or something. Um, but feel free to email me um, any questions that you may have, um, and I would be happy to answer them. Meaning after this session, not right now. <laughs> and Nicholas Perry is uh, one of our student ambassadors, um, and he is here to answer any questions you have about maybe the student experience. I know many of you have already asked some questions related to kind of the online courses and in-person courses. And he, as a student, he will be graduating actually this fall. So we're super excited for him. Um, but he could probably answer a little bit more about what that transition has been like from in-person to online. Um, and, you know, kind of any anything is on the table for the student experience that you might want to ask him specifically. And, and feel free to just chime in with that. Um, but what we, I can also answer, I know um, one of the questions that came in was about the uh, 2021 scholarship um, application, um, that those will open next month. Um, and so if you go to scholarships.unt.edu, you can go online to apply for those. Since you all are prospective students or not currently enrolled students, um, you will not be eligible for for the Ryan College of Business um, scholarships for next year, because those are only for enrolled students. But you will qualify for UNT scholarships, so definitely go to that website, scholarships.unt.edu, to apply for the UNT scholarships as well. Yeah, thank you, Christina. Uh, another question that we had was from Ella. She asked, when you started a freshman, do you need to have the previous knowledge about business or can you start with little to no knowledge about business? You don't have to have any knowledge of business. So we will teach you everything. Um, that's what we're here for. And so um, 
we we really start at the basics, especially with our tier progression, um, the way it's designed, is we want all of our students to have that basic knowledge. So maybe even if you come in with some prior knowledge, which we do have students that do that, um, oh, sorry. Um, we, we like to make certain that everybody has the same groundwork. So um, again, regardless of whether you've, you have knowledge or not, you'll still be getting the same information as everybody um, in the program. And so I would say no, like you don't need to, you don't need to know anything previously. Do you have anything to add, Christina? No, I think, I think that's a good overview. Awesome. And then Juliana asked, are those four cities the only choice for study abroad? They are not. Um, so those, those listed at the time that the, um, that the presentation was created were the ones offered at that time. Literally every year that changes the professor that is leading the study abroad. Um, so those are open to change. And those I want to note were just the College of Business faculty led um, um, programs. And also we have some partnerships for semester abroad as well. But literally UNT has hundreds of a study abroad opportunities. So if there's a city you really like to go to that maybe we're not offering um, a study abroad program for, the university very likely is. And so you may just need to look at what courses you can take to go into those programs. So, um, so again, that you're not limited to just being in College of Business led study abroad programs. Awesome. And Maria uh, asked, if we transfer, will we be coming in as a first tier student? Do you, do you want to answer that, Shelby? Um, I'm sorry. It was, uh, are you coming in as a first tier? So yeah. it depends on what you have taken previously. Um, so some students do. Um, some transfer students do. We have some transfer students that haven't taken any math courses yet. Um, but or they've taken two math based courses, but they haven't taken a third. Um, so it really just depends on the courses that you've completed thus far. Um, and so uh, you could come in as BUND as well. And then Adriana asked, how is the community involvement and how will y'all prepare me for working for a charity or a nonprofit? So for community involvement, really that is, I tell students that you are kind of the, the driver of, of that vehicle. And so um, community involvement is, is very important, obviously, especially if you're going to work for a charity or nonprofit. Um, and we have the opportunities there. Again, we have student organizations just within the College of Business, but let's say you know that you wanna to go to work for a nonprofit that is working with, um, with elementary school children. There are different um, volunteer experiences on campus that you can do specifically for that to kind of help prepare you for that. Or let's say it's something in like environmental, whatever. Um, we have programs that you can um, become involved with in, as, in that as well. So what I would say is if you know kind of what your end goal is, let's work backwards from there and figure out what opportunities um, exist that can really help you to get to the job or the company or whatever it is that you're wanting to go into. And trust me, there all of those experiences are available at UNT. It's just a matter of you finding it. Um, and, and again, another thing I tell students is don't expect it to be just kind of handed to you on a platter. Sometimes you might have to do a little digging, but trust me, it's there. And, and that's why people like us exist that work for UNT, because we want to help you get there. You just need to let us know what it is you're looking for. Um, and then Victor would like to know, um, what is the difference between the academic program and the majors? So, uh, and, and I'm going to assume, Victor, what, what you're asking about academic program. Um, the, I believe that that was the, um, Shelby, if, if I remember correctly on that slide, it was the department, yeah. right, I think. So, um, so every major is housed in a department. Um, so accounting is the only major that's the same department, like the accounting department only has accounting majors, but like Shelby listed the FIREL department, which is finance, insurance, real estate, and law, they have multiple majors within that one department. So when, when you say academic program, maybe you're a marketing major, you, so that means you're in the, your academic program is the marketing um, 
marketing logistics and operations management program. So it's a little, and you'll learn a little bit more about that. The main thing that you really need to be concerned about is your major. We figure out all the rest for you and we'll tell you what program that, that is. But, um, but majors, just know that majors are housed in departments. Perfect. Okay. Well, unfortunately we are out of time, but thank you so much, Christina and Shelby for presenting to us on that. Um, I noticed that there are still some questions in the Q and A that didn't get answered, but um, Shelby went ahead and put in the chat a link to the Zoom room that they're going to be in from 10 to 11. So you guys can go and hop in that Zoom room and answer or get questions answered that didn't get answered in the Q and A. And we're also gonna have their contact information um, on our website. We have it now um, under the College of Business, but also under the UNT Preview uh, website. Um, we'll have their contact information later this week, as well as a recording of this presentation. But thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you for attending this session. Um, we are here um, if you have any other questions today, but thank you. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. Bye. Bye. Do we leave? So I'll be. I'll, I'll go leave. ahead and end the meeting for all of us. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I'll, I'll meet y'all in the new Zoom. <laughs> okay. I'm going to open it. I'm, yeah. Okay.